We launched BizMachine.com as an agency back in 2017. Today, it's almost it's 90% SaaS, doing about 1.4 million bucks in revenue across 250 customers that pay on average 350 bucks a month. Those customers are licensing data and seats from his platform, BizMachine, to go close more deals. So it's a B2B SaaS sales tool built and based in Prague and focused on customers that are in Europe. Hey, folks, my guest today is Martin Nandash. He's leading Biz Machine, the Prague-based SaaS company that builds B2B sales intelligence and prospecting platform for companies in Central Europe. The mission is to provide maximum depth of intelligence to regional B2B professionals with specialized insights into e-commerce, fintech, ICT, and automotive fleet markets. Martin, you ready to take us to the top? Hello. Very nice to be here. It's great to have you. So give me an example of a customer that's paying you guys today. Well, the range is quite broad um, from uh, small sales teams of uh, two to four salespeople up to um, an enterprise with a sales force of 250 people. Um, so the size doesn't really matter for us. What's more important is that they're really interested in the regional or local sales market rather than you know, uh, tapping to an international database. We go quite deep in individual industries and mm-hmm. uh, in individual use cases for that particular vertical of the customer. And so like, should we think of you like an outsourced SDR agency or are you using technology here to solve this problem? We're using technology. So uh, actually we started as an SDR agency, uh, kind of a consulting business about three years ago, uh, about 70% of our revenues was one-off project revenues. Uh, and at that point, uh, also with COVID started- what, what year was that, Martin? Uh, three years ago, early 2020. Okay. And can um, I ask you how much revenue, agency revenue you did in 2020? Um, who? I, yeah, less than a million dollars. Okay, got it. So you had some yeah. you had some traction, but you weren't doing, you know, we, four or we five We had some million. traction. At that point, we decided to invest much more into technology, into the platform, into self-service, et cetera. Especially the mission was to bring the insights and advanced analytics benefits that a large corporation could buy from us to bring it to a much smaller sales team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we knew that we had to invest much more into the platform so that things are not ad hoc and customized all the time. Uh, and then they can actually tap to it. Um, today, uh, this one-off kind of project revenue is less than 17%. So 83% is our recurring revenue. Um, and most of that is directly from the platform as a data license and user license. Uh, whether used by users in the user interface or an API to their systems. And so, Martin, what does the average customer pay you per month on the SaaS side of things? Um, it's uh, $4,000 a year. So that would be like $350 a month. And so what if someone's paying you $4,000 a year, how many seats are they getting? What's the data license look like? What's included in that plan? Uh, they would typically have you know, four to five seats. So that's kind of the sweet spot. Now, we also have others that have 250 seats, but uh, the median kind of the, the basic package is four to five seats, um, and we license data and seats separately. So either you have very broad and detailed data sets, even if it's one seat, it could be quite expensive, or you have many seats. So we can scale both through depth of data or number of seats that are using it. Typically, okay. the license would include both. Yeah. Okay, very, very cool. And you mentioned some of your accounts have hundreds of seats or a lot of seats. Yeah. Don't name the customer, obviously, but what is your largest customer pay per year? Um, more than hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so so interesting. And that's and, and when you say you sell the seats separately from the data license, how do you even package and sell a data license? What does that even mean? Well, it's always a bit of a negotiation. So above certain size, it's an enterprise deal, uh, obviously, and it would. With large customers, it would always include user license, data license, some integration, um, and maybe even custom work on top of that. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. 
Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your founder path dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, one point two million seed round, three point seven raise. They sold twenty two percent of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. Interesting. Now put this all on a timeline for us. Obviously, you, it sounds like you pivoted the agency in 2020 to more tech, but when did you launch the agency? What year? 2017. 2017. Okay. And then uh, you pivot in 2020. And I guess fast forward to today, how many customers are you working with? 250 customers. Wow. How did you get the first... 100. What was the strategy? Well, some of them were transitioned from the agency business to the platform. So we knew them, we knew what they needed. Uh, we transitioned them uh, all the way at the beginning. It was uh, through references mostly. And um, I would say the first uh, 20 or 25 were references. And at some point we started cold calling. <laughs> That's amazing. So 250. Really almost, almost like a door to their door to door uh, Salesforce. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's the hustle it requires, but 250 customers paying $350 per month would mean you're doing about $87,000 per month in revenue today. Is that accurate? Uh, so our total revenue is uh, about $1.4, $1.6 million a year. Okay. And that's on, but that's because you're adding on the agency revenue on top of the SaaS, right? The 17% that's yeah, one so time. The SaaS, so the SaaS only would be uh, 1.1, 1.3 million. Yep. 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 And so what do you think, what do you think you'll grow to here in 2023? Uh, on the SaaS part, something like 20%. Okay. Interesting. And are you guys bootstrapped or have you raised capital? Totally bootstrapped. So we had some initial seed funding from the founders, uh, three of us. Uh, and since then it's bootstrapped. Now, were you guys nice to each other at the start? Did you split equity 33, 33, 33 or what? That's exactly what we did at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the right decision? Uh, maybe not, but uh, let's see. <laughs> well, tell us what you learned. A lot of first time founders are listening and maybe they're in the middle of an equity negotiation right now at their first SaaS company. What can they learn from you? Yeah, look, um, there's always pros and cons. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, coming now back and listen to other war stories of uh, what, what other entrepreneurs have seen and done. And uh, if I look at it today, of those three founders, I'm the only one active now in the company. Ah, uh, so were the other two on a vesting schedule, or did you buy back their equity? Uh, not yet. Are you working on it? Not yet. We're we're, we're negotiating, discussing. We had a spinoff, etc. So it's it's a bit complex, but uh, everything will be right. So is that a mistake not to have all the founders on vesting schedules? Because now you have 60% of the equity not active in the company. Uh, I think it was a mistake. You know, we say, we have a saying here that um, uh, friends uh, need good setup and good friends need even a better setup. So, you know, having a formal structure is not in the detriment of a relationship. It's the opposite. So it probably... Um, would have been a bit easier. But, uh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, you're scaling nice today. I guess walk me through how many folks are full-time at the company. Uh, we're 20 people. 20 people. And how many of those folks are engineers? 
uh, exactly half. So ten engineers. Yeah. And are you an engineer that by includes, trade? That includes data scientists, data engineers, and software engineers. Yeah. Are you an engineer? No, no. I used to be a long time ago, but uh, not for the last fifteen years. You're a Lotus guy, right? Uh, no, I worked for SAP as a software engineer. Ah, so okay. A long time ago. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. So you've bootstrapped today. Now, um, w- tell me why you've decided to bootstrap. Well, at the beginning. It was more to keep the control of the company. So that was the primary motivation. And it was relatively easy for us uh, to sell projects, consulting. Um, and after a while, I would say one year ago, if you had asked me one year ago, I would have said, no, we're on a path to go and get venture funding to accelerate the growth. Now, you know what happened with the multiples and everything. So we're bootstrapping another year, I would say. That's awesome. What about exit scenarios? I mean, it sounds like there's an opportunity right now because you're sort of trying to figure out a bunch of equity that's not active anymore. I mean, if someone came in today and just offered you $3 million all cash for the whole company, would you sell? No, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> you had to think about that. Yeah, I need to convert to, to crowns, check crowns, you know. <laughs> Ah, no, l- let no, me let me no, phrase no, it differently. No, I think there's more potential than that. I would be much more interested in a strategic buyer that sees benefit in the technology and, and the IP that we have and wants to develop it further. Um, well, let's say it is that. Let's say it. Let's say it is. Martin, let's say let's say it is that kind of buyer. Yeah, yeah. Let's say it is that buyer. They come. They offer you know three x your annual revenues, all cash up front. Uh, 3x is borderline, and the team would have to agree with it. Interesting. Okay. Does the team own equity? Uh, no, but we will be having an ease up plan. Ah, okay. Very good. Very good. Love that. Well, I love how you're building the company. I love how you're scaling. What's the plan to go from you know 250 customers to 500 customers? Is it just cold calling and hustling, or what's the growth strategy? So right, right now, our CAC is about four and a half months of uh, recurring revenue. So, so about $1,200. Yeah, something like that. So between four and five months. Um, and it's mostly sales, very little marketing. Uh, we'll be growing the marketing portion, uh, but we have to learn as we go. Yep. So yep. Um, I think uh, um, over the last year, we more than tripled the inbound leads generation and uh, the references and everything. So it, it's looking good. And let's see where it takes us. We're rooting for you. In the meantime, now let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, probably Principles from Ray Dalio. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, quite recently, I checked out a lot of uh, Patrick Bed David, if you know him from Value Um, You know, I, I get inspired by people who are uh, kind of hustlers, go through a difficult story and um, are successful in the end, then it's it's a very different life story to mine. Um, and I like to see that. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Biz Machine? Oh, I have a favorite one every month, but I think Make and Slack. Make and Slack. Okay. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? During week or weekend? <laughs> during six week. To seven, six to seven during the week. Okay. Seven. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? Well, I'm married. I have five kids. You have five kids? Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. You're a busy guy. How old are you? I'm 47. 37? 47. 40. 47. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 47, five kids. You still get seven hours of sleep. This is incredible. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20, Martin? Trust your own judgment more. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. He launched bizmachine.com as an agency back in 2017. Today, it's almost, it's 90% SaaS, doing about 1.4 million bucks in revenue across 250 customers that pay on average 350 bucks a month. Those customers are licensing data and seats from his platform, BizMachine, to go close more deals. So it's a B2B SaaS sales tool built and based in Prague and focused on customers that are in Europe. Martin, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.